Rich Helen for You Fit Studio. Talking about ways to reduce snacking. Now, um, in case Helen really hasn't noticed, Christmas is soon upon us. Um, and actually, um, I, I talked about this other day, um, Christmas snacking has also already started, which seems bizarre uh, to some, maybe, except actually, mm, for others it's not. Uh, Christmas snacking is well and truly underway. Um, I've, I've, I've mentioned it the other day, I've got a client who's got through several cheese balls already with some uh, biscuits at night in front of I'm a Celebrity. So it's not even um, the end of I'm a Celebrity yet and Christmas snacking has started. That is early, right? Um, so, and it is actually, if I think about this, pardon my squeaky chair, I'll try not to move too much. Um, if I think about this as a common question, it is one of the most common questions I've probably come across as a coach in all the time that I have been doing this. Uh, how can I stop myself snacking or how can I reduce snacking or what do I need to do or what can I snack on? That's always one. But what can I snack on that's healthier? Okay. Now, this is really about ways to reduce snacking over stopping snacking. Can I just make that clear? So reduce over stuffing. And I've talked about snacking before. Again, as always, I'm coming out with some slightly different information and a different angle um, so that in case something resonates a little bit different in the time we've got together, then by all means, as Always though, there's only so much you can cover in um, a 20 to 25 minute slot when it comes to um, a big uh, challenge like snacking. Therefore, uh, if you do want to learn more or you want to get control of some of your nutrition, then please check out, <laughs> I'll be like I'm on Instagram, uh, check out in the comment section and on Instagram, check out in the post video uh, details of where you can get in contact with UFIT Studio if you want to get uh, a handle more on your nutrition. Um, you can hit on that and get in contact with us and we'll look at that with you. Right, in the meantime, let's get into it now, okay? So I'm going to go through, oh, how many points have we got? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, seven ways, seven different ways to reduce snacking, okay? So seven ways to tackle snacking in a different way. As I said, some of this might resonate with you. I've done some lives on snacking before. If one of these don't uh, tickle your fancy today, that's okay. I've done plenty more. Have a listen. It might find something that works for you or you think I'm gonna give it a bang. Hey, good. So I'm going to some of these now. This is, this is really, I actually studied, I looked into this, it was a fascinating study. There was a study once, um, not that long ago, um, which talked about, it not talked about, it did a study on um, the difference between making snacks accessible visibly and not. And what they did was they had um, clear bowls of chocolate and covered bowls that were not clear. So almost like blacked out bowls with a cover on, and a clear glass bowl with chocolate in. <laughs> now, I shouldn't have to do a survey, I would imagine, for most of us to guess which group of people ate the most chocolate. We might have to think about the numbers. I'm going to tell you anyway. So 71% of the tested people were more likely to more often dip into the clear bowl because of invisibility. So 71%. 71% more often dipping into the clear bowls. Let's let it go. Right? So it wasn't about 71% consumed, 71% more calories consumed. It was 70% more dipping into the bowl more often than the team or group of people who were sat with a clear and covered bowl where they couldn't actually see uh, the snacks or the chocolate snacks that they were on offer to them, right? So it goes to show that we don't just talk nonsense that you fit, although we do actually as well, because nonsense is fun. However, actually, some of the time we talk stuff that actually means stuff. Go figure. However, what we're really saying is that um, the more visible, and I've talked about this before, my clients, the more visible you make your snacks, the more likely you are to eat them. I talked about another client in the middle of lockdown who had left uh, a bag of nuts by the kettle. All right. So every time she makes a cup of tea, dipping on in. Right, she made, and we do have a habit of this, making those snacks accessible unconsciously sometimes. Because until I pointed out that maybe that's perhaps why she was eating a hell of a lot of nuts um, and consuming a lot of calories, it just hadn't tweaked because it's, it was just an unconscious thing. However, if you are in the habit of snacking right now, it's good to take a second, maybe now, maybe later, take a second to think about how accessible um, you're making the snacks to your, to your habit, right? 
it, but ultimately, you have to make it more hard work. Now, if that means, funny enough, well, I've not tried this with Grant, if that means putting it into a, uh, a, a outside out of mind, right? Out of sight, out of mind. That'll, oh, just look, I had thrown another chestnut again. Out of sight, out of mind. Uh, again, my mother is clapping. Going, yay, I told her something, yep. It's true. God rest us all, it's true. Out of sight, out of mind is true when it comes to things like snacking. The more accessible you make it, the more likely you are to have it. 71%, our survey says, right? 71% more likely to dip into something that's visible and accessible. Now, oh, I mean, the solution is on the client, right? It always is, it's on the client. So. If I talk about the client with the bag of nuts by the, the kettle, I think they ended up in a shed of all places. Now, again, that might sound interesting. However, how often are you going to be asked to go down to the shed to, to have some nuts while I'm making a cup of tea? Not in this weather. OK, but this client constructively decided that I have to make this the most inaccessible snack so that my habit is actually taken that step further and that step harder for me to keep partaking of it. It's just crazy cool, right? Now, I'm not suggesting you will start humping your fridges down to the shed. What I am saying though, there is this somewhere probably in between where you've got the difference of an easily accessible cupboard and actually somewhere that is hella out of the way. That means you have to take a step further to get your hands on the snacks. Now, why would I say to somebody, take it a step further? Because it gives extra time. Now, why do I want to give someone extra time? Because I wanted to give them extra time, they're actually considering that they really want to have it. Now, it's easy, and I think we all agree, to unconsciously eat a few nuts while the kettle's boiling. It's a nothing thing. However, if you have to get a step ladder out to get to the highest, if you are four foot, to get to the highest cupboard in your kitchen, is that as easily accessible or as unconscious as just absentmindedly nibbling some nuts while the kettle's boiling while you're looking at Instagram? Or is that in fact the step further that's like, actually, I'm already really want them that bad, I'm bothered to do this. Whatever your snack may be, whatever your environment is at home, it's always great to think of solutions where you make that step a little bit harder. It's, don't Before I get into any of these, I know it's not easy to say, well, just don't buy it. I do know that, I do know that is a solution. I also know it's Christmas. And when you see a festive Jaffa cake on offer on the shelves, or anything, I'm not just, I'm not just, or any other biscuits, they're about, I'm not plugging them by the way, in any shape or form, I'm saying all other biscuits are cool. However, if that is your jam, literally, um, it's it's so accessible these times, it's just, it, it's, it's not as straightforward as saying actually, um, I'm just going to ignore it, I'm not going to buy it, all right? As I said at the top of this, Christmas snacking has already started, so think, I said it's about the bad, reduction, not, not completely eliminating it, okay? Okay, this is a tried and tested one as well, <coughs> excuse me. Well, I cough and laugh at the same time. <laughs> this really does work. I and mean, this might be one you've not heard before. I have uh, a couple of clients who are currently trialing and one that's been doing this for a while, uh, brushing teeth and using mouthwash, okay, during the day at times when they know they're likely to snack. Now, why, again, people are like, why would you do that? It sounds like, a, that sounds like making it really hard. Mm, yeah, I guess, and that's kind of the point. Uh, depending on what they're snacking on, um, if someone's just freshly cleaned their teeth and mouthwashed, um, eating chocolate on top of that is pretty grim, I think, by any of these standards. Um, and so I have one particular client who actually carries um, a little, 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 little mouthwash, little, little bottles of mouthwash um, in their car. So when they're on the road, because they're on the road again now, they can, and they know they're going to be going past service stations where they like to stop and get stuff. They have a quick mouthwash, quick clear out, and then actually distracts them firstly, and secondly, um, puts them off actually eating anything that's going to change the fact they just cleaned their mouth out. It's It works, okay? I'm sure there's more science behind it. It is all psychological, I know for sure. However, if someone's just brushing and mouthwash their teeth, for example, or, I don't know, go for the full floss, I don't mind. Whatever keeps your mouth healthy keeps you healthy, right? Um, but actually doing that distracts and puts someone off from then eating again. Give it a bang. <laughs> this one's a good one as well, um, and it's about visuals. Um, again, it included um, another study, right? So you go over the study findings. Um, basically, they had two huge tables of people. So they had two study groups, 
two huge tables. Um, one of the tables was cleared. So they kept bringing out chicken wings um, onto the table. And on one table, they cleared them away. So everything that was at was cleared away. And on the second table, nothing was cleared. All right. So the study participants could see how much they were eating. So they had a visual gauge of how much they're consuming because it wasn't being cleaned. I don't know if any of you have gone to, I won't name it because obviously there's other, there's other buffet places as well, but there's a certain buffet place uh, in the city of Leicester that does this, that does the, the option over the table where they literally, I think you must probably just put your foot down, they clear, clear your plate. Have you ever been somewhere like that? Where they clear your plate. So any, any evidence that you've even been up to the buffet the first time has been removed, unless you've got it all the way down you, but you've been hanging it in, right? which was me, <laughs> not recently, but it was me, uh, then there's literally no evidence that you've been up to eat. And this is what the study was looking at in some degree, because what, what does it do? I know what it does for me. If I'm at a buffet and my, my first plate is cleaned, it's like a clean slate. It's like, oh, start again, right? There is no evidence that I've even commenced other than the fact that I'm having time to do my belt. We're good, right? This is the same principle. They found that Against the cleaned or not cleaned table, 34, so the table that, that, that had all the food cleared, at 34% less. Sorry, that wasn't cleared. Ah, got that right way around. I knew it was confusing. The table that wasn't cleared, where the, 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 the participants could see how much they're eating, right? They could actually gauge it. They at 34% less of the chicken wings than the participants. Now, the idea behind it, or the theory behind it, was that um, they were keeping a check on what they were eating because they could see it. And it was partly probably from evidence from other people, how much each person was eating as well. They're like, oh, you've had some. Oh, yeah, I have too. I've had quite a lot. Yeah, I've got, oh, yeah, I think I stop now. Whereas if it's gone, it's just it's like, how many do you have? Oh, I've lost count. <laughs> right? Which is, I've had five, right? The same thing applies if you're at home. I'm not, I'm not like suggesting you go 150 chicken wings and see if you can eat the most. What I'm saying is that um, if you clear down the evidence at home or at work, right, you're, wherever that may be, right, if you clear down the evidence that you have been snacking or eating unusually outside of meals, uh, it, is, uh, it is kind of like removing the gauge on it a little bit. So to, I'm not, again, I'm not suggesting you all to be tramps and messy. Kate is like this, can I leave this stuff out? <laughs> Okay, come around my house. My snacking's been left out for six months. <laughs> Keep you busy. However, what I am saying is that it, it, um, if you are in a snacking position and you know it's happening and you're permitting yourself to do so, leave the evidence there so that you're not, you're aware you've done it and you're aware how much you've had. If you've got empty wrappers, etc., leave the wrappers where they are. So you can then, again, make a conscious choice. I'm going to continue eating because I can see how much I really had or I'm going to hide the evidence, right? I saw a 34% less reduction in people who could see how much they had actually consumed, right? Now, some ones I've talked about before, I've talked about this on, um, I did a chocolate live, I remember how much fun it was, I keep bringing it up, it was a lot of fun, mainly for me. <laughs> um, and it, this applies, right? So it's, it's all about going smaller, not larger. So pick smaller packets when it comes to snacking. And um, by that I mean, uh, the mini size chocolate bars, you can get the um, mini, um, when I say mini chocolate bars, I mean like, um, what do I mean, like, like uh, what I talked about in life, like going from Kit Kat Chunky to a two finger Kit Kat over a four finger Kit Kat, right? And what we're saying from going from a uh, full dairy milk bar, uh, God, I hope it's not the full one, the, the big, big one, um, to your, like your five stick, go down to Freddo, right? I talked about that. You can also do that in times of multi-pack with crisps. Things like that. So going small, so going for smaller packets. Um, now studies show, I've got a lot of studies on this one, I spent a lot of time on this one. Studies show you can reduce the intake by 25% if you go for a smaller packaging variety, right? So, so far we've got, don't make it as visible or as accessible. Keep your mouth and teeth clean. <laughs> Use visuals, as in keep a track visually on how much you've had and go smaller. Uh, and now here we go. So we're going to some, some basics which loads of our clients will know about and also think why we're doing this. Um, pad out your meals, your main meals, so outside of snacking with fibre. I've talked about this a lot. I talk about a lot with clients about this. Um, 
just in general health, right, when it comes to nutrition, but also in terms of snacking, right, it counts and it matters because if you are fuller longer after eating, you are less likely to snack, okay? So a lot of clients will say to me, what can I have to eat, Helen, as a snack? And yeah, I'll be looking at their meals and there'll be maybe two slices of carrot and, and a piece of spinach as an added fiber to a meal. So actually what I'm knowing is that that client isn't having enough fiber or a big enough uh, portion of vegetables to pad out that meal um, to keep them fuller for longer. Go with eating slowly, less distracted, um, more pleasant, more full sensations when you're eating your meals, and then you'll know that you're at capacity. So actually, you will be reducing snacking purely by adding more fibre and being more mindful when you're eating your actual how many meals you're having a day, your main meals. Okay. Um, we can, we can, I'm going to touch gently on the emotional eating. Yes, I can talk about the ways of snacking again. I've talked about this a couple of times this week. That is so bespoke and it does really need a one-on-one -on -one coaching pathway or um, strategy really to get to the bottom of individual cases why somebody is emotionally eating uh, and includes getting to the source of the stress, which is often loneliness, boredom, uh, emotional attachment to a previous experience, anything like that, right? Um, but getting to the source root of it will help you reduce it, okay? Um, and the last one and final one, and very simple and straightforward, um, Lots of water, guys. Just keep hydrated. Now that is, I think it stands for the whole of the holiday season anyway. I've talked about that as well, but stay hydrated. Uh, make sure you are uh, hydrated and not dehydrated so that you're looking for, for food, thinking you're hungry and actually you're just thirsty. It's a very simple and a yet again, very, very extremely effective ways of reducing snacking, okay? So there's my principles to reduce snacking over the Christmas period that has already commenced. Um, great ham on that cheese board. Three cheese boards. I was impressed. I actually did applaud them, to be fair. That was a, an amazing attempt. So let's just recap some of them. Do the mini crap in the middle. Let's go again. Out of sight, out of mind. Get that stuff in a difficult position. If not in your shed, some of them involves a ladder, maybe the loft. Put them in the loft. Put your snacks in the loft. Everyone's a winner. You could. I bet so, now I've said it, some of you go, Helen, I listened to your live and I did it. I was like, oh, good God. Okay, remember, 71% less, 71% less access. It means less attempts going into your, your chocolatey goodness if it's uh, in something less visible, less accessible. Keep your teeth brushed and cleaned. Not only will you be extremely kissable, you'll be eating less snacks because you don't want to ruin that lovely taste. Use visuals, as in, so, I love stats today, 34%. Less consumed food if visibility is left on. So empty packets, uh, empty wrappers, all of it that reminds you how much that you have actually ate. Not having someone clear it away like it's never happened or yourself wipe away the evidence. Leave the evidence on show so you know you're keeping yourself somewhere accountable of how much you're snacking.